Native American traditie komt. Philippe Chavez. Het is een interessante visie over bridging between the inner and the outer, between the old culture and the new. He comes from the Native American tradition and tells us about the use of entheogens and how that relates to his Indian system, how he sees the relationship between drug abuse, alcohol abuse and marijuana. Being on the crossroads between the West, the American history, the North and the South, different languages, that is where we here in Europe can learn a lot about what it means to have cultural roots. Today with us is Felipe Chavez. He is a Yaqui Indian from the southern parts of the, of the United States and he's here for the Cannabis Cup. And uh, we are talking about the culture of America before we from the West, so to speak, came there. Tell me, you are a Yaqui Indian. What, what does that mean? Is that a tribe? Is that a nation? Is that a people? That is a tribe. That, uh, well, like most uh, indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere throughout the world now that have uh, moved on from just one centrally located area to throughout the world, like the, uh, the Cherokee. Uh, wherever you go in, in, in the world, you, you'll find somebody that's a Cherokee or part Cherokee. Uh, and all tribes are kind of not so much located unless there's still a few of us that are still on the reservations. And I uh, honor and respect all my relatives there. Some of us have found other means of, of life, lifestyle, not that we've turned loose of our roots and our, and our ceremonies. We were very much into and tried to encourage the, the youth of our, of our people our, to, to, uh, to follow our steps that way in the, in the, the ways of our, our ancestors, the ways of our grandpas and grandmas, you know, that uh, spoke to us about values and about how to try to get along in this world and create that peace that we talk about through our interactions with each other. How we understand more about each other's cultures, each other's religions, each other's uh, styles of life, each other's foods, respecting the, the sacred food that feeds all of us, and the water that we drink, the air that we breathe, all these are issues of our people, and, and not just the, the Yaquis, but indigenous people throughout the world. We've been talking about this for, for many years now, about polluting the earth, our mother earth, and how it's going to have an effect on everybody, not just the indigenous people of the world, But everybody, to me, uh, is some form of indigenous through their grandparents or their ancestors that at one time did ceremonies around the fire, uh, did these things around the fire that we still do today. We do, the fire is a very important part of our ceremonies. Uh, the water is an important part of our ceremonies. Uh, therefore, we want to stress to all, all relatives out there, and I refer to all mankind, all part of creation, to, to listen, to listen to the trees and to listen to the water to smell the air that we breathe and to taste the water in a good way and to keep conscious that our children are following behind us and what is this world going to be like when we're gone, when it's our time to, to take that journey to the spirit world. This is something that we concern ourselves with and not leave a, a big mess on this earth for our children to have to clean up and that's what our concern is at this time. Yeah, is, is that, <clears throat> do you feel that from the indigenous people like the American Indians we can learn to have a better relationship with the world? not this technological separation where we're, by we shield ourselves from nature, basically. Well, I believe that a lot of people have lost trust. I believe there's so much fear in the world at this time. And that's why I know in America you hear of a lot of children in the schools, drive-by shootings, uh, overdoses on heroin, uh, alcoholism being at an all-time high, and the, the devastation it's had on our people let alone uh, not speaking of other cultures also. But to me, uh, one of the biggest, uh, as far as uh, drug that I feel has been so devastating is alcoholism. And, and I believe that treatment with marijuana, or the sacred ganj that we call it, uh, is, is kind of like a buffer zone between, between being an alcoholic and coming down in a way where you can tolerate and start learning how to appreciate yourself more. Re re Re, re, replenishing that self-esteem that we all need to be proud of, of who we are, 
so we can walk with life in, mm -hmm. in a good way, in, in a strong way, as warriors that we are. But that's your personal experience that's too. My personal experience. You, you've been an Indian, and you have been as you know what we very negatively sometimes see Indians as that they are drunk and they are, you know, sleeping in the streets, stuff like that. Uh, you've been there, and now you you come to Amsterdam at the Cannabis Cup, not to promote but explain about this buffer zone application of cannabis. I believe that uh, cannabis is here for a sacred reason. And it's a medicine, and not just for people who are having problems with their eyes or uh, nausea, all these things. Uh, I think you're looking at it in a spiritual way and not abusing it, uh, but looking at it that way where, where it's something sacred that you, uh, like if a person it feels like they have to meditate you know, once a day for however hours, uh, it's a part. Of, it's a part of my ritual now, to to smoke this marijuana. When I get the urge to go out and get drunk, which I haven't for some time, I I, I contribute a lot of that, a lot of that spirit of my self-esteem and myself to to using marijuana also to relax me and, and take the edge off sometimes when you're going through stress in life. It's a it's a good thing to, to relax you, bring your blood pressure down, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know if you have problems with that kind of that kind of biological problems with it. But during the last campaign, uh, Dennis Perron told us about uh, you know his proposition 215 in California to free marijuana. The the opposition, the critics of this 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 opening up of of medical use said yes, but this is just another drug. You are replacing, in your case. Alcoholism, but with being drugged by uh, marijuana. Well, that's just the point. To some people, it's a drug. Uh, I don't look at it as a drug. I look like if you drink a glass of water and you're thirsty, uh, water is not a drug. It's water is a substance that we need to survive to, to keep our body uh, functioning properly. And I believe that uh, in a prayer, it's like if uh, if a person uses some form of incense or objects like that in their religion that helps them. I would uh, gladly promote that, providing that it doesn't have a, a psychological or, or an effect on somebody that's going to hurt somebody else. I believe that marijuana, our people used uh, many, many years ago for, for ceremonies. And, and this is all that hasn't been uh, really taught in, in history. Uh, once in a while, somebody will come out with the truth. And that's what we seek for in this life, is the truth. That, uh, the freedom to practice our ceremonies is part of an important issue in our lives. I'm not saying that all the Native American rituals respond, relate to, to marijuana. I do personally myself, because it's been a, an, had an effect on my life where it's brought me back to, to, I like to believe that we're all spiritual beings, that we learn to love and respect each other that way. And I believe marijuana has helped me. It's motivated me and opened up these channels. It's opened up my heart a lot too to tolerate a lot of things that I don't understand, to, uh, to be more patient, compassionate towards my fellow man. And these are all things that marijuana has helped me to, to find a good part of myself that I like, that I can share with other people. When I hear you, it, it nearly sounds as if you make marijuana take the place of the tobacco, as I understood it, it played a role in American Indian tradition many years ago. And tobacco is still a very important part of it. Tobacco is, is is sacred to us in many ways. Uh, we use tobacco when we're going down the street and you see one of the animals uh, that was struck by a car or something. It's good to, to offer tobacco as a prayer as a, for this uh, for this relation. He's a, a relative that was hit by a car or something. We use tobacco. When we smoke tobacco out of our pipes in a ceremony, we do not inhale the tobacco. We release it like a prayer. And that is... Uh, Marijuana is something that's soothing, uh, chemically or whatever you want to call it. It's soothing, and it helps you take the craving off. If you have an, a, a heavy addiction for alcohol, it'll help you calm you and take the craving off. You have to go out there and drink a, a, a bottle of Mad Dog or whatever kind of wild wine you're drinking, get a hold of. So I, I hold that marijuana is a, is a, is a medical uh, strive for this country, not just country, but for the world to use it more. And I believe in these treatment centers. Uh, I believe in uh, on these alcohol abuse treatment centers that uh, marijuana can be used in a, in a, in a good way to, to help people get off alcohol. I really believe that in my heart. 
You are a Yaqui Indian. Now, we, we know, many people know about it because of the books of Carlos Castaneda, mm -hmm. who described how he was an apprentice to a Yaqui sorcerer, Brujo, um, a guy who taught him about the other realities. Now, how do you feel about his books, and do you think it faithfully describes what, 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 what your tradition is? I believe the books had a lot of accurate uh, information. Some of it is a little questionable, but uh, in truth, uh, I believe it opened up the consciousness of a lot of uh, American people or people that aren't uh, that much into uh, indigenous ceremonies. Uh, opened up the consciousness and the awareness of understanding uh, Mescalito and the certain uh, sacraments that we use for our purification. And that Mescalito is the mescaline that uh, yeah. the peyote... Uh, Mescalito, yeah. yeah. Uh, these things that uh, happened in the 60s here, in, in, well, happened in the 60s in the United States, uh, the flower children, the hippies, all these things that came out, uh, a lot of a lot of it was written back then. Carlos Castaneda did, did a lot of research on this, and I believe it's really accurate. Uh, you can go in villages in Mexico and still talk to old people there that have a lot of wisdom about these ceremonies, and uh, I very much uh, respect that. And I believe that all of us should go back and find something in our life or in our ancestors and our ceremonies that we can they relate to nowadays, to, to the system nowadays, and how we can compromise and, and be in a place where it can be asked for in like a treatment center where you can have a, a choice of what kind of treatment you want. And I, I do believe marijuana is, is a treatment for alcoholism, and, and I hope more people are out there can understand that. I know we have a lot of relatives in jail for, for smoking, and I, I would rather see somebody smoke a joint than to drink a bottle of wine, myself personally, because I know the bottle of wine is going to have a much different effect and a calming effect than smoking a joint of marijuana. And it might help you get over some anger or frustration mm -hmm. or something like that. Now, in the early days of LSD experiments, remember Tim Leary, Harvard, those days, one of the, the, the great things they claimed for LSD was that it would help in addiction other addictions, notably alcoholism. Coming back to this Yaki thing, it felt as if the experience that people had with LSD in the in the 60s or, or earlier made them made them receptive to this wisdom of other realities. Do you think there's a there's a basic reason why why people take to alcohol? Why well, is this is this either shutting off this other reality or is it opening up the reality? What do you, what do you feel? I have really a bad feeling about alcohol because uh, I know the effect it's had, a devastating effect it's had on my life as well as uh, a lot of my relatives. Uh, in the barrios, the ghettos, the reservations, wherever it is. Alcoholism is one of the most devastating illnesses there is in this world. I believe that uh, using of marijuana can curb the craving and the effect it has on you. I, a lot of my relatives are in jail for, like I say, uh, having marijuana and smoking it, uh, and, and yet uh, they can be roaming around in the street in the gutter somewhere, and nobody really wants to help them that way. Uh, I think they should be uh, treatment centers where they, they can use marijuana to, to come down off the alcoholism and where you restore your self-esteem and you feel something good about it and then continue with life in a good way, in a spiritual way, with all these ceremonies. Arizona is one of the states where now, hopefully, this, this is going to happen, where the law will allow people for medical use to use marijuana and to grow it. Will that change society? Will that change the situation for the Indians? Well, I think a lot of relatives will probably quit drinking so much. I believe that, uh, that there's an element of our people out there that are a little reluctant to step forward and say, yeah, I smoke marijuana. Uh, I find that uh, facing the truth within yourself is part of the part of the healing process that we go through. If, if you were offered a joint to smoke uh, when you're having a hard time instead of a, another bottle of wine, uh, I think it would be a much better healing effect than to go back into the alcoholism again. I believe that there's something sacred about marijuana uh, that affects not just the well, I say psychological and, and physically. It has a, 
a calming effect. Uh, I know in my life, I'm not going to say that it's everybody's medicine. I believe that there's a, a chance that people can try it and see what they feel about it, have that opportunity, that option to try it, instead of all these other things that they're putting in their body. But now you speak out. You can legally do speak out. Yes. But a few months ago, it could have meant that, that the police would knock on your door and say, Felipe, you have been saying you use marijuana. Will please come and, and we will put you in jail? Well, I've been using marijuana uh, even before I started drinking, but I, I kind of got off of it and, and went into the alcohol uh, when I was in the service when I was young. And uh, when I came out of the service uh, in uh, 1963, um, I was pretty much uh, really drinking a lot. And I went for years like that uh, uh, in the streets and uh, not really doing too much for creative in my life. I was mostly, mostly feeling pitiful. And I always try to help my brothers and sisters out there that are having a hard time with alcohol and uh, try to share that knowledge with them about maybe smoking marijuana would help heal that hurt that we have inside of us, that uh, frustration that drives us to drinking sometimes. And like I said, what, what is that frustration? Where does it come from? Well, I think it's, it's, uh, it's come from the, the, first, the first time that, uh, that the boats landed over there, you know? And uh, people, we meant good by sharing everything with everybody that we felt like the land was everybody's. But that's, that's what the basic thing was about Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving fact, was a time to share uh, the, the squash, the corn, uh, the plants, sh showing these people how to plant things so they wouldn't starve for the winter. It was part of our uh, kind gesture that we had as, as uh, people to share. We was always taught to share, that nothing belonged to anybody was taught to share. And Thanksgiving nowadays, it's turned so much where it's a lot of commercialism and the true thought of the true spirit of Thanksgiving, I think, was lost out there someplace in some areas. For me, Thanksgiving is, at the moment, it's like the Americans had tobacco with their holy things. We, from the West, we, we had um, marijuana, cannabis, which was comes from Turkey, I think, in the, in the beginning. Um, it could be a nice, a nice remembering of, of this exchange process. But what what it has become is the beginning of the shopping season. Yes, you're right. It's, uh, I believe the holidays, which are supposed to be spiritual holidays, have been commercialized. So how much you can buy, and what uh, what do you want to buy for your friend, or what? And and then sometimes the guilt that goes along with it. If you can't afford to buy this or that, there's a competitive force out there trying to sell you things that you really don't need. It's lost that true spirituality of what Thanksgiving is. Mm -hmm. Isn't that one of the problems of our day and age, that everything is commercialized? When I traveled around the Hopi area there in, in, in Arizona, Sedona, I, lots of Indians there, Navajo country, it was all commercialized. You know, the roads were filled with little stands with, with Indians trying to make a buck on stones or on leather jackets or whatever. And yes, I did buy it, and I, I hope I, they... They, they benefited from it, but it made them new slaves to the commercial god of, of, of yeah, greenbacks, making money and, and giving up their traditional way of living. At Big Mountain, a second mesa, there's uh, Dene. Dene, that's the Navajo, the Navajo and nation. Uh, that live on the mesa there that's been there for many years and the grandmas are still there weaving their rugs. There's still people there herding sheep. It still has the old ways. It's still, and they, this, the only way that they want to be relocated would be through the creator. This is a statement that the grandmas there have said they will not feel like anybody has a right to relocate them from that land which has been sacred and where the ceremonies are held to be relocated so Peabody Coal can come in there and strip mine and uh, contaminate the water, and, and they have a history of that anyway. So. Let, let's put this in perspective. You're talking about an area in, in Arizona, Arizona, Northern Arizona, which has been a traditional ground for the Indians, where they lived, where they had the reservations, which was, was not only theirs from the beginning, but was also by law given to, to them. And now, commercial organization come in, mine, mining companies, and they want to take the land and thereby relocate these Indians. 
relocation. Forced them out, so to speak. Forced relocation is what yes. it is. But yeah. no doubt it will pay a lot of money for that, but that is not enough. A lot of money, I'm sure, has exchanged hands for them to get the permits and to come in there and do that. But we believe it's, uh, it's affecting the water table there. They use slurries to, to clean uh, as, they, as they mine, as they strip mine. And the water, it goes back into the water tables. There's Again, st strip board. mining is a mining on the surface. It's not digging yeah. in very well, deep. they're doing both, really. Yes, but what they do is they're really plow the, 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 the countryside and they, they, with enormous machines, this is enormous really big, machines, big, big industrial uh, stripping the yeah, country. Strip mining, right, yeah. that's what it is. And the tailings get left on the top and when it rains, it gets into the water table. Now we have uh, uh, records of sheep born deformed. Uh, children in that area are being affected by uh, uh, a lot of the stuff that's left on the ground on the, on the surface that uh, the tailing, some homes were even built there without their knowledge and people that contracted uh, cancers, different forms of cancer there at Big Mountain. So these are issues of our country that... The Which might come because, for instance, radioactive uh, elements that are deep in the earth come to the surface, right. because that's one of the things they try to search for, and l are left. And then the people just pick up stones that are radioactive or, and they develop all these strange things. Yeah, yeah that's right. We've been trying to call the attention of the American people to, uh, to what's happening. Uh, a lot of the media doesn't cover a lot of things. Uh, uh, it seems like it affects the, the chain reaction of people who control the government and whatever in the United States. I believe there's, there's a lot of people uh, uh, being lobbied, uh, taken out to eat so they can, people can get uh, permission to do things. That's how they acquire things in our country. It's not the poor man that gets elected, it's the man with the most money. And this is, a, they call it democracy, but it's not fair. Nothing's changed since Robin Hood days. There's still the tax collectors and the people out there, the merry man, uh, the people out there doing it for the people. Unfortunately, a lot of people that are up there in office in Washington, not really for the people. Uh, they're going mm -hmm. to cocktail parties. T tell me things. how it could be done different. Tell me about a yucky way to, how do you become a chief? How do you become a medicine man? What uh, is it different among the Indians to, to, to select their leaders? That's a pretty hard one to, to describe. Uh, usually, I know uh, grandmas are the ones that decide who's going to lead, uh, who's going to be the chief. And, they get and the grandmas are just the older women? The, the, the elders. The elders, uh, yeah, uh, decide uh, who, who they want to represent them. And they have a, a consul, and the person is, it's going to represent the tribe or that uh, area. Will, will be given a chance to do so, and they get like uh, two tries. And if they don't do it representing the people, then they have they, they will be replaced. And it's not a harsh thing. It's just something. Well, you had your turn. Now we're going to try somebody else. And the grandmas elect that person, sit around. And Does that lead on. to say? The young kids might, in that situation, feel that the old people decide what's going to happen. Well, you know, there again, there's a compromise be between the grandmas, and it's just uh, input that the young people... You no, know, years ago there was a conference in Oklahoma, and they had them every year. It was called a, uh, Elders and Youth Conference at, at, in Oklahoma with uh, Philip Deere. He's gone to the spirit world now, but this was a conference to for the elders and to the, for the young ones to, to come together and exchange ideas and thoughts, at the same time showing the utmost respect for the elders and, and gaining that wisdom from them and then coming up with new ideas that could be uh, entered into this uh, procedures that we're doing. And this has always been a fair part of it. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, but uh, still, you hear stories about Indian tribes that, like we heard it from the Pima Indians, that they say, yes, but the people that we elected to represent us sold out. Or they sold out in, in return for a, a gaming, a, what do you call it, a casino uh, thing, lots of money for relocation. Um, it seems that as soon as, as you get in touch with this material world, the same mistakes that we make in the West happen within the Indian tribes. There's a lot of distractions from our purpose in life. And one of them for sure is gambling. And I know that it's brought money to the reservations and this and that. Uh, let, let me explain. 
as a kind of, of gesture towards the Indians to help them find economic grounds, the American government has granted to certain Indian tribes the right to have casinos in their territories, which attract people from outside the uh, territories to gamble. So that's the, 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 the gambling situation. Before it was only like in Nevada, some states, but now the Indians in most states have their casinos. So they're running the casinos or they're, they're theoretically the owners of the casinos, just to explain this. But you, you're not so happy with this situation. Well, it has its pros and cons. I know the people who are really opposing it because it's also caused a lot of people to lose their homes or gambling is not uh, really uh, something that you would consider um, showing your children. Uh, the gambling is taking a chance, a big chance, and a lot of the relatives also in that community, I mean, there is a lot of people at work, but there's also a lot of people that go there to lose money that can't really afford it, and we have to think about that element of it. I mean, there's lights and there's money, but who's getting all the money? Some of it for surely isn't going to all the tribes. See, this is something that I'm sure there's corruption, but uh, that's part of gambling. And in some cases, it's good to, for the revenue that's bringing in. In other parts of it, it's bad because of the effect it's had on our people, the alcoholism and so on. It's kind of funny that first alcohol, which, you know, mo even Americans themselves see not as a as a very positive thing, and then now gambling, their second uh, sin, is brought to the Indians, and, and uh, maybe not very wisely. Well, I can see where it's had a, a good effect. I mean, there's uh, enjoying a lot of things that normally, in a, in a form of modern day society, uh, some roads are being built. There's been some improvements here and there. But the, let's say a uh, percent of that, uh, is never seen by the people, you know, and I know that that uh, in, in every uh, organization there's, there's people that take a lot of money, more than they, they deserve perhaps, uh -huh. but uh, I feel like uh, gambling is good in a way to bring in revenue, but as long as it's being appropriated the right way, as long as it's being distributed the right way, where it's going to benefit the tribe, and that's, that's a problem there, so whether it's all getting mm. to the tribe. If you look ahead, 50 years from now, will the tribes be dissolved? Will, will there be an assimilation, a mixture, an integration of, you know, will the Americans finally, for the American Indians, become part of the American melting pot? I mean, genetically that has happened a lot. Yes, it's happened. I'm not saying it. Like I say, I don't think it's all right for the people. I mean, sometimes we make decisions that are not right for, for our children. So this is something that's really important that we make a make a decision that's going to affect our children and to make it, make sure it's the right one. Um, I believe education is really important in this in this whole uh, world, this life. But uh, education in the form of uh, how we can get along with each other is the most important part. It's all of us tribes, uh, 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 different religions. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, interfaith and about how s understanding each other's cultures understand each other's ceremonies, so then we can relate to each other better. We can say, oh, well, that's important to you. Well, I'll respect that. And if you tell me about your religion, whether it be a synagogue, a, a church, or some kind of, uh, I always think about going there with respect because you have invited me, and I want to learn about your culture because I want to be your friend. This is a procedure that we should all have, is showing each other, teaching each other, that respect of listening to each other will help this world become a, a much better place, a much more harmonious place. If we don't think we're better than anybody, we think we're equals and we're all part of creation like that. And that's what's gonna make the world a better place. It's not too judgmental, it's nobody accepting that we all need each other. For the best healing in the world is love and how to, how to get along with each other. No matter what kind of ceremonies we do, the ceremonies that we do are, should be universal ceremonies that bring us together so we can uh, we can get along like that. That would make this world be better. Yeah. I hope so. Thank you. This was Felipe Chavez, a Yaqui Indian from Arizona, and he taught us about relating, love, and having a joint once in a while. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>